today I'm going to show you another uh, fun and easy hack for making bags with a domestic machine. You don't always have to have an industrial machine to make a beautiful bag. Um, there are many ways uh, to hack a pattern so that uh, things are much easier to sew with a domestic machine. And I have a Bernina 770 and my machine will pretty much shoot bullets. <laughs> it, it will sew through anything I have asked it to do. And I've asked it to do some things that an industrial machine could do. Um, but if you have uh, a domestic machine, maybe it's not a Bernina, um, and you want to be a bag maker, you can most certainly do it. Um, if there is a video you're watching or a pattern that you've purchased and it says this is not domestic machine friendly, just become an engineer or a designer. Think about it. Read through the directions and look for ways to simplify something or change something a little bit. Move it uh, rework it, something, and you can do it. You can do it. So this is, today I'm going to show you a hack on D-ring straps. This is the Large Harlequin. This is a free pattern on Crafted by Leanne Facebook group. Uh, so go and join her group and in the file section of that group you will find the regular size and the large size of this Harlequin bag and it is they are both free. Um, in the small size she has you put a uh, I believe she has you put a D-ring here on the side and a wristlet strap but I wanted to make the large size and I wanted it to have a shoulder strap uh, if you make the strap a little longer, it can be a crossbody. But I definitely wanted a shoulder strap. And I used, you can see, I used foam in my bag. And I put a slip pocket. I'm not sure that's in her pattern, but um, in a larger bag, a slip pocket is a pretty cool little thing to have. And so um, you can see that I'm up to the point where it's just about time, if I do this, you can see it's just about time to put my bag together. So I've sewn it up all that way, and I do have foam. This is not fusible foam, and you can see that I have basted it all the way around, and some places I did trim it out of the seam allowance, and some places I didn't. Lots of times you'll see it suggested that if you have a domestic machine and you're using foam to trim it out of the seam allowance, but sometimes I don't. Um, the thing with foam is the more you sew it, the more compressed it becomes. So if you baste it down and then when you sew your bag together, you're near or just outside your basting, it's going to be just fine. And this is vinyl or faux leather. This is marine vinyl. And so I don't have any any interfacing on that. Just the foam. And I think almost any machine can sew through that. So on one bag that I did, I riveted a strap connector about this big to the after I sewed the side seams to the side. And so the D-ring sat this way on the bag. This time I want to try something, and that worked just great because I riveted everything so I didn't have to sew anything. And on this bag I decided that I wanted to have the D-rings on the back. This is the front of the bag over here and the back. This is the back. So I want my D-rings to sit with the bar on the D-ring just about right along the line of the top stitching on my zipper. So 
I made a little strap and I was playing around with it and I decided that I could now this one's going to be too short but I'm in the process of making one the right length to show you so I'm going to I was going to and I measured in and I decided I want my D ring on this side to be in an inch and three quarters so it's just about here I don't want to be in the way of my side seams and so this strap is going to come all the way down and off the bottom of the bag and my D-ring will sit right here. And my machine, this is just one layer, folded over this and my phone. So my machine is going to stitch right through this just fine. And you'll use like a denim or a jeans needle, or uh, I just have an 8012 in my machine. And if your machine's tough enough, you're domestic, you can stitch this with an 8012 just fine and use like a 3.5 stitch length. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make my strap and I'm, I'm going to top stitch in on each side at 1 fourth inch. Then I'm going to put my D-ring on and I'm going to come down an inch and a half with my fold. I think that's kind of the norm. And I will use double-sided sticky tape, and I will tape it in place on my bag. And then I'm going to top stitch at 1 8 inch and stitch it on. So here I'm making, I'm making my straps. So I've cut a piece of vinyl 2 inches because we want this strap to be one inch because my D-ring is one inch. If you had a one and a quarter inch D-ring, you would be using a one and a quarter inch strap and you'd figure out the math. So we're gonna fold this to the center and that's how we're gonna finish the back side of it. So you would do your math. But anyways, I'm doing a one inch finished. So here's my strap I cut and I have put double-sided sticky tape all the way down on both sides I drew a line down the center and it's on both sides of the line and toward the middle so that I'm not going to be running over it with my sewing machine needle. It, you can get non-stick needles nowadays um, and if you do happen to get some glue from the tape on your needle don't worry about that you can use an alcohol wipe and just wipe your needle off but it will give you some headaches if you try to sew with glue on your needle. So I'm just going to, all the way down on this strap, I'll do the folding. And these are going to touch in the middle. If I were making my shoulder strap, I would leave a little gap so that the strap can fold. But since this isn't going to fold, I don't need to. So I just work my way down. I don't take my uh, paper off the back of my tape all the way because I'm not very coordinated and I'd have it stuck to everything. So I just kind of take it off as I go. And each of these straps on the large Harlequin bag need to be 2 by 10 inches. Now I'm going to make one long strap and then I'll cut it into 10 inch pieces. It's, it goes a lot faster, it's a lot more economical. And when you're making bags, and if, especially if you're selling your bags, time means a lot. So do whatever you can to save time. Do production type uh, work and, uh, and like I said, look for ways to streamline and that you can use your domestic machine. I do not own an industrial machine 
and I have made many, many bags, and I never consider um, that my machine won't do it because I know that if there's a place that I think might be too thick, I figure out a different way. And I'm hoping to add several videos to my channel that are nothing but domestic machine hacks. I haven't seen very many, or actually I haven't seen any people who are bag makers on the groups or anywhere else focusing on hacks for domestic machines. So I'm going to try to just play around with that a little bit. Okay, so I'm to the end of my strap. So I will take this to my machine and I will top stitch at a quarter of an inch. Okay, I've got my, I've got my strap all sewn and I used a 3.5 top stitch length, a stitch length, and I used an 80-12 needle. Got along just fine. And uh, I'm measuring in, I think I told you before, an inch and three quarters, but it's two and three quarters inches. So then you'll put a mark right here and two and three quarters inches in from the other side. So here's my strap. I have it cut to 10 inches. Then I fold it under an inch and a half, put my D-ring on. And I am going to put this D-ring right the bottom bar of the D-ring is going to be right along the top stitching along my zipper. So just position it right here and we'll make sure it's good and straight. I'm just kind of checking it out right now. That looks pretty good. So that's going to be really pretty. And so now I'm going to put a piece of double stick tape on the back side of this and we'll take it back to the machine and top stitch it down again and we'll put it at we'll top stitch at one eighth inch and you don't have to have two rows of top stitching you can do one row if you want to uh, do that I'm kind of a big fan of two rows. I think it's pretty neat and you'll see on a lot of my bags that I do two rows of top stitching. So that might just be my something that's I like so you don't have to do it. Okay so that's pretty straight. Pretty straight <laughs> as I tear it off to reposition it. <laughs> I want it to go straight down, so I'm kind of looking at my at the at the bag, so then I'm looking for what my is pleasing to my eye. That looks pretty good. So now then, let me see if I how straight I am. I'll line a line up on my ruler here. And oh, great. Okay. So now I'm only going to be stitching through my strap, this piece of vinyl, and the foam. I'm not going to be stitching through my lining. So I'm going to take this to the machine and I will top stitch up, across, and back down. So here's my strap attached to my D-ring. And the back of my bag just is going to look great. I'll put another one on the other side at the same, at the same measurement. Woo. And it's going to look really, really pretty. So as opposed to trying to sew um, you know, a short little D-ring connector 
into the seam on the side of the bag or in this seam with the zipper. So here you'd have a layer of vinyl and you have to count another layer of vinyl because this is top stitched. Your zipper, the foam, and you're going to have two layers of lining because it's folded over. Then we're talking two layers and two layers because this is folded over to the center. And when you're using a domestic machine and you're trying to sew this into this seam, either your top stitching is going to be just uh, pretty, it's going to be tough, you know, to, to make this look really pretty on the outside when you're trying with a domestic machine to sew through so many layers. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, this is just one of the many ways there is to sew a beautiful bag with a domestic machine.